Hello everyone and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Cultural Depot. Thank you so much for watching. We are so happy to have you here. Please be sure to visit our website daily for newly uploaded Black History videos. Don't forget to inquire about the Zoom link to Touchpoint Tuesdays so that you can get in on the discussion. Today, we will be highlighting the ancient civilization of Nubia. We encourage you to use our videos as starting points as you begin your own journeys of discovery. Now, let's get started. Africa is one of the biggest continents on the planet. It is several times greater than many countries across the world. Coveted for its numerous precious metals, stones, natural resources, and other commodities, Africa is also home to some of the greatest civilizations, kingdoms, dynasties, and empires in history. Ancient African indigenous civilizations existed as many as 200,000 years before the Common Era. Nubia, which includes Kemet and Kush, were amongst these civilizations. Nubia was a large area along the northeastern border of Africa. Centered along the Nile Valley, it surrounded Kemet, or ancient Egypt, and Kush, a region corresponding to modern-day Sudan. It was inhabited around 8,000 BCE. The northern region of Nubia, or Lower Nubia, is home to the border of Egypt and Sudan. In central Nubia, or upper Nubia, the cities of Kerma and Napata can be found. In the lower region of Nubia, or southern Nubia, is the royal city of Meroe. When documentation of Nubia can be found, it is usually referring to upper and southern Nubia and can be used interchangeably with Kush. In fact, there are many references to the Kushites of Nubia. As early as 2500 BCE, Kerma is cited as a dominant political force in control of the Nile Valley. Under the leadership of King Aoa, Kerma sees much success. Because of Kerma's location, they were situated in the heart of the trade route from western to eastern Africa and from central Africa to the Mediterranean. By levying heavy taxes and tolls from all trade along their border, Kerma was able to amass a great wealth. The armies of Kerma were cited to be the first ones to use elephants in active combat and warfare. They were referred to by Kemet as Ta Seti, or Land of the Bow, in reference to their unmatched expert archery skills. Their bows were about six feet in length, usually made with palm fiber stretched across different types of wood. The arrows were short, fletched with eagle and goose feathers, and given steel tips which were often poisoned, demonstrating their knowledge of chemical science. Kermite dominance lasted until about 1400 BCE when the power shifted from Kerma back to Kemet. All that remains today are remnants of the mud brick structures that were used as temples or funerary chapels. Around 740 BCE, from the Nubian capital of Napata, the Kushite king Paye and his grand army invaded Kemet. He became the first pharaoh of Egypt's 25th dynasty. The rulers of Dynasty 25 were unique, as these rulers all originated from Kush and ruled both Kush and Kemet. To indicate this dual rule, two cobras were worn on the brows of the Kushite ruler. One of the most influential Nubian pharaohs of Dynasty 25 was arguably King Tarhaka a son of Paye. Under his leadership, temples and monuments were expanded at Memphis, Thebes, and Jabal Barkal. The final period of the Kingdom of Kush is sometimes known as the Meroitic period after the Nubian capital of Meroe. The Meroitic period lasted from 300 BC until the 4th century of the current era. Like Kerma, Meroe was situated in an ideal place to capitalize on trade. 
with trade routes to both the Red Sea and the African interior. By using the Nile for irrigation, Miroe was agriculturally fertile. It also had lucrative iron and gold mines. Lining its Nubian skyline was a vast number of Meroitic pyramids. A single necropolis at Meroe boasts more pyramids than all of Egypt. The pyramids of Meroe are smaller and steeper than their older Egyptian cousins. While the pyramids of Meroe were spectacular, the most fascinating thing about Meroe were the Kush Kandakas, translated as Queen Mother. The term Queen Mother can also be found in literature documented as Candace. The oldest documented Queen Mother was Kandaka Amani Rina, who succeeded her husband, King Tritakas. Candace Shanak Daket was the first Queen Mother to rule on her own. While there were several Candaces of Meroe during the reign of the fabled city, there was one storied queen mother, Candace Amani Renas, the one-eyed warrior queen who led her army into battle against the Roman Empire. Candacas Amani Renas would prove to be victorious as she drove Octavian's army back to the Roman Empire in defeat. After the victory, there was talk of theft and plunder of Augustan statues, which later turned out to be true with the discovery of the head of Augustus Caesar buried in the entryway of one of the Kandaka's burial temples. Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to visit our website, theculturaldepot.com, so that you can stay up to date on newly released videos. Don't forget about Touchpoint Tuesdays every Tuesday throughout the month of February, 6 p.m. Central Time. Hope to see you there.